Hey y'all, Coach Nefi here, talking about biblical dates. Yep, we found something here recently that we found to be very interesting as far as a date in the, the scripture. We found this while we were preparing a class, while we were doing the, yesterday's class on Jacob's trouble. We went in and we talked about the how, the who, the what, the when, and even the where of, you know, the Jacob's trouble. That's probably why it took that, uh, why it took an hour and 17 minutes to get through that class but it's power packed with a lot of information if I were you I would go over and check out that class if you want to know about Jacob's trouble but the thing about it during that class we found something extremely interesting um, and I wanted to share this with you now this is um, new to us we've only you know heard about this within the last five or six hours but I really want to go ahead and register my ideas on this and share it with you to get you guys to, you know, chime in with your opinions or what you think about what I'm about to show you. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's something you can add so that, you know, as we get closer to this date, we can have better presentation, have more knowledge on the subject. But anyway, um, it's really exciting stuff. But, okay, to start off, we have to come over to Jeremiah and chapter 31. Um, like I said, we was working on um, Jacob's trouble, and this is one of the chapters that goes into detail about Jacob's trouble. Chapter 30 uh, talks about it a lot as well. But when I looked over at the Septuagint, I found something really interesting in verse 8. Now, if you're not familiar with the Septuagint, it um, was probably the first translation of the, the uh, Bible. It's the same translation that would have been available to the authors of the New Testament. Of course, the King James Version didn't come out until 1611, but the Septuagint was available approximately three or four hundred years before a Christ you know, came down to the earth. So even um, the Messiah himself, it appears as though he was referencing the Septuagint because when you go back to the Old Testament in his references, it appear it, it is like word for word in the Septuagint, whereas in the King James Version, there's a little bit of paraphrasing or something like that. The, the Septuagint is very close to um, the references that you find in the New Testament. The reason why I'm stressing that is because there is a significant difference between verse 8 of uh, chapter 31 in the Septuagint and in the King James Version of the Bible. Matter of fact, let me read it out of the King James Version first. It says, Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. OK, now this last part of this scripture um, appears to be quite different. Let's look in, a, in the Septuagint and see what it says as far as verse 8. It says, Behold, I bring them forth from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover. And the people shall beget a great multitude and they shall run hither. Look at this. I mean, it, it, let's jump back over and look. It's saying the same thing. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth over here in the Septuagint it says behold I bring them forth from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth but then notice this part to the feast of Passover so he's going to gather them to the feast of Passover now I find that really interesting because I'm already familiar with this verse over in 2nd Ezra chapter 2 and verse 38. You see how it says rise and stand and see at the feast of the Lord the number of those who have been sealed. So this is talking about the feast of the Lord and the sealing process and how it takes place at the feast of the Lord. 
and I believe this is the same ceiling that we see over in Revelation and chapter 7. Um, from what I understand and from the scriptures that I have read, it seems as though this ceiling that we see in Revelation in chapter 7 will happen at the uh, Feast of the Lord. Again, we get that from 2nd Ezra chapter 2 and verse 38. But as we come back over and look in Jeremiah, as he's talking about saving Jacob through this trouble and bringing him into the promised land, so to speak, we see here that he will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover. Let me show you some very interesting verses related to Passover that support this idea including this one in verse 11 which says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death look at that part right there where it's talking about the blood of the lamb this would be talking about the 144,000 and or that multitude that no man can number that we saw in chapter 7 well look at this verse out of chapter 7 verse 14 where it says and I said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb I believe this is what Revelation chapter 12 was talking about when it said that this child was caught up to our father and his throne remember second Ezra said that we receive our sailing during the feast so which feast is it that we are washed in the blood of the lamb you probably know, already know the answer to the question it is the feast of Passover remember that communion supper where your son took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins well, look at verse 29 of Matthew chapter 26. It says, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So could Passover 2021 be the beginning of the Father's kingdom when we are regathered? I don't know, guys. Y'all tell me what y'all think down in the comment section. Do you think this means anything? Well, go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and make sure you have that bell notification button pushed because we're going to be working on this over the next few months and you don't want to miss any of those classes when they come out. Hit the like button if you got anything out of this class. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. But leave us a comment either way and may our Lord bless you and keep you. May our Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.